Afternoon all. I hope you are well. Well, I have officially joined the dark side, as Mike would call it. I now am the proud owner of a Costello pipe. I have yearned for quite some time, for a good number of years, for a Costello pipe. Sadly, Costello do not make, they steadfastly, despite being asked, they do not make 9mm pipes. Um, I've had two, or three actually, in my hands with potential uh, for owning them, but uh, I declined for various reasons. I had one which I bought on, from a very well-known seller on eBay from the States. I received it and I wasn't happy with it and they took it back very graciously. Um, I had one from Mike. I had an option on one from Mike. I didn't actually have it in my hands. But he had somehow found a an unsmoked virgin um, a Sea Rock Lovat, I think it was. Uh, obviously somebody had converted it. Somebody um, had it done in Italy apparently. Um, and it was new. Um, but it was out of my budget range at that at that time, um, sadly, and I kind of regretted afterwards not getting it, but hey-ho. And then the final one came from GQ Tobaccos, which um, I was hoping to convert, but it ended up that the shank was too narrow. Um, so I've always been on the lookout. Anyway, GQ Tobaccos have just had a drop of Costello pipes. I think it's their second batch that they've had. They got their first batch maybe 18 months ago, something like that. Uh, maybe a bit longer. I, I'm not sure exactly when they had it. Um, most of them sold out. Um, they may have had one or two left, I'm not sure. Um, but they've got a new batch in. So I perused through the batch and I saw one which had potential. I contacted Sam. Uh, Sam is fantastic. He's, you know, all of the B&Ms, all, all of the internet sites, I'm sure, are all fantastic. But, you know, Sam is the one that I've interacted with the most and his, his uh, customer service is just second to none. Unbelievable. Anyway, I got it yesterday. It arrived today. Um, you know, so he sent stuff out always first class and uh, it arrived. Literally, I must have uh, contacted him yesterday uh, around lunchtime, something like that, maybe a bit after lunchtime, and it arrived this morning. Um, so here it is. Anyway, I, it arrived this morning and I converted it. Within the hour, I was smoking it. Um, you know, I, I straight away stopped what I was doing. I converted it to 6mm. Um, and anyway, here it is. I have already smoked it, but I've packed it up just for you guys. So you can have the traditional reveal. It's quite a chunky pipe. I mean, just look at the size of that bit. It's huge. I don't know if you can get the sort of comparison with my finger, but it's a very big bit. It's a chunky. Just look at that rustication, how deep the gouges go. And it has a smooth rim. I have smoked it, so I've smoked some Orlick Golden Sliced. It says made in Cantu, Italy. Castello Sea Rock Briar 4X Kino. US, so made for the US market, I guess. Um, in the old days, instead of having a white bar, there was a, a silver, a foil sort of diamond in, in an acrylic uh, sort of thing, a dot. Um, it says here, handmade Castello. Um, so it's it's kind of chunky pipe. It's It's not quite stubby, but not far off. It's somewhere in between stubby and a regular size, quite a high bend um, and I've actually got a pipe on the lathe now which is kind of modelled on that in terms of the bend. I mean I've made plenty of apples before but just copying the bend, the, the angle of the bend, it, it, it there are compromises to be made because for 9mm it's impossible to get a straight line through. But anyway that's a different topic. Um, I love this colour contrast, the black and the this this sort of browny golden kind of color that they use. Um, uh, Mike actually said that he's. I asked them about the darkness of the bowl because um, it was quite dark, and I asked them if they stain it, and he says no, that's the color of the briar. Um, he said that the rim is also not stained; it's all the color of the briar. It's just polished. Um, I've been studying it for quite some time. 
I'm going to beg to differ on that. Um, I do think that, I mean, I, I sort of defer to Mike's knowledge. Um, obviously, I mean, he's been dealing with them for years um, and he's a, a Costello smoker for quite some time. So I'm not going to sort of stake my reputation on it. But to me, it looks like there is something, even if it's just compound, that colours it up a little bit. But there is definitely something contrasting here, um, which is more than just the colour of the briar. But anyway, that's not important. The bottom line is, is it's stunning. It's a beautiful pipe. It's quite, uh, it's quite heavy. I'd probably say it's around somewhere between 60 and 80 grams. Um, so if it was 60, it wouldn't be that heavy, but it's probably closer to 70 or something like that. But because of the bend, it's really quite comfortable. Um, as I say, I've smoked it. Um, obviously using a six mil filter in there, um, it's uh, a bit tighter than what I'm used to in, in nine mil, especially my own nine mil pipes. Um, but it was actually pretty good. It smoked well. I didn't have the problems with it like I've had with some of the other recent um, pipes that I've bought from other people where I've had to adjust um, the pipe, like the Peterson. And this smoked the first time better than the Peterson and better than a couple of other pipes that I've bought recently. Um, so even at six mil, it smoked very well. Um, I may, in, in, the, in the fullness of time, still convert it fully to nine mil. Um, just to make it more convenient and so that it's the experience that I'm used to. I packed it light, which definitely, definitely helped. And I broke my rule and I did not do, I didn't, I didn't do the honey treatment. I didn't coat the inside of the bowl with honey because I wanted to experience Costellos as they are. Um, you know, Mike always tells me about the Costellos, that they, they there is a difference of taste. He finds that the uh, tobacco tastes somewhat brighter in Costellos. Anyway, so, I mean, I can't compare it to anything else because it's the only Castello that I've smoked, but um, maybe now this will be the beginning of uh, a little mini, a mini, a little mini grouping of Castello pipes, we'll see. I'll have to be on the hunt now for pipes with uh, thicker shanks. Um, anyway, I'm just really excited to have finally, finally been able to um, obtain a Castello. Um, you know, despite the fact that I make pipes, I'm still a fan, I still have pad. Um, pipe acquisition disorder, um, I still, you know, um, it helps that I'm able to sell pipes if I decide that I don't want one or if I've bought it and I don't like it or if it, for whatever reason it doesn't work with me, it doesn't suit me. So I'm in a position that I can sell them mostly. Um, but I'm still a fan, you know, I'm still, I've still got some yearnings for certain pipes or certain brands. And Costello was definitely right up there on my list. Um, and so far, it's early to say, obviously, I've only had one smoke, but if I compare my first smoke with the very many other first smokes that I've had, it was a good one. It really was. So, um, very, very happy to have gotten this, and uh, hopefully, as time goes on, it'll just get better and better and better. We shall see. All right, I just thought I'd share my little new experience with you today. I wish you all well. Have a great day. Um, and I'll catch you on the on the next one. Um, I did have a little bit of a mishap with the pipe. I managed to crack the tenon when I was converting it. I mean, it's still okay, but um, uh, that's why I probably will still move it over to being nine mil. But um, so basically, I converted it by drilling it out by hand, um, just by putting this into a handheld chuck and just turning, which was fine. But when I went to the final thickness. I don't know why, because I was going in half half a millimetre increments, but for some reason it cracked. And I've still got the piece which I'll glue back on, but the filter sits in there no problem because I've actually had to drill it all the way in to take the filters. The 6 mil filters are really long. Um, so I'm just trying to see if they're actually longer than 9 mil ones. They are, they are a little bit longer. I wonder if that's to make up for the capacity because it's narrow so they can get enough carbon in there. But if you imagine that, it's you know got to go quite the way down. But because it's such a, a thick uh, stem, it's able to do that. I was able to drill that in. So I managed to drill all the way in. So obviously the filter's got no problem being uh, being held. You know, that's absolutely fine. Um, but um, it, it will bother me, the fact that it's um, cracked. I do have the piece. 
it's just one whole piece which will glue back in just fine so i'll probably do that for now but um I might even not because I think it improves the draw because there's more air getting to it as a result of the crack. It did smoke pretty well, so I'm going to leave it actually. I'm going to leave it as it is until I eventually convert it to 9mm. And to do that, I just need to drill in a new tenon. That's all I need to do really. Um, it looks like this is an integral integral tenon. Um, this is uh, acrylic by the, by the feeling of it. And uh, so I hope that there's... No other issue inside there if when I drill it. I mean, it's plenty thick for me to do that. Um, so we shall see. Anyway, like I say, I just wanted to share all of that with you. And um, I will leave that filter in. So maybe I'll smoke it again tonight. We'll see. There we go. It is a thing of beauty. I really, really like this contrast. This color contrast just works so well. There we go. All right. Thanks very much, everybody. Catch you on the next one.